Hey, what's up? It's Dan Riccio, Randy Janda, and game one of the Stanley Cup final in the books, Randy. We look ahead to game two, but first, what was your big takeaway from game one? The takeaway was we're lucky to watch this, first of all. Are you not entertained after that first one? Uh, for real, though, the takeaway was the Colorado Avalanche and their speed was overwhelming for stretches there for the Tampa Bay Lightning. There was a, a bend but not break mentality, it felt like, for Tampa Bay at certain times. Guys that normally don't look overwhelmed, like Victor Hedman, all-world defenseman, you know, Mikhail Sergachev, who is a very, very solid defenseman, very good uh, veteran players that never get, you know, overwhelmed we're feeling the heat from the Colorado Avalanche. So this was a big takeaway for me is that how can Tampa Bay slow this Colorado Avalanche team down a bit? How can they continue to maybe beat that forecheck? Val Nichushkin was an absolute beast in that game. So that's the big takeaway. It's, it's how does Tampa Bay deal with that moving forward? Now, the question for me is also at the same time, I was looking at Twitter. I was seeing people react to this. There's no reason to freak out for the Tampa Bay Lightning. We're talking about the Tampa Bay Lightning here. Would we talk about this with other dynasties? Of course not. So while I understand speed is an issue, the tenacity of the forecheck is an issue, one thing we have to be very, very careful with these Tampa Bay Lightning is that they've been there and they've done this before. You look at that Toronto series, hey, there are worrying moments there, but they figured it out. New York, they started late in that one. They were down two zip. They figured it out. They kind of remind me of a prime Floyd Mayweather in his boxing career where he, it takes a couple of rounds to figure it out. But when they make those adjustments, you watch out. So, Dan, take away speed from the Colorado Avalanche, no question. But no reason to freak out for the Tampa Bay Lightning. This thing is far from over. You know they're going to come back so much stronger in the next game. Victor Hedman's game one performance was, was about as good as the reaction to Drake's album drop last night, Randy. Not okay. great. It was not good, but we expect Victor Hedman to be better. Of course we do. We expect Andre Vasilevsky to be better. If you're still counting out the lightning after one poor game, I mean, that's that's really on you at this point. They've shown it throughout the playoffs that they're a bit of a slow starter, and John Cooper and his coaching staff is about as good at making adjustments through the course of the series. But there are a couple of things here that are worrying for the Lightning that they'll need to correct going into game two. The speed is huge. I thought they didn't deal well with the forecheck. I didn't like the way that they were just giving up their blue line to the Colorado Avalanche constantly. The entries were way too easy for the abs throughout the course of that game. And the biggest one is how do you slow down the McKinnon line? It seemed obvious that you do it with Anthony Sorelli, good Woodbridge boy, by the way. And he struggled in game one, to be honest. And who wouldn't against Nathan McKinnon, but how do you find a way to slow down that line? Because that line just felt like it set the tone throughout the course of the game and really wore down the Colorado avalanche. They did not do enough to slow down that line. Jared Bednar was like, yeah, I'll take that matchup as long as it's working because why wouldn't you? So that shutdown line, I think is probably the biggest storyline going forward in this series as to how much you can slow down Nathan McKinnon and his line mates. Well, on the other side of things though, because I think that's a valid point, Nathan McKinnon and Sorelli, we're going to watch that closely. And, and it is something to watch for in game two, but even other than that, Kucherov and his line versus Makar and Taves, it was all Colorado. If you think about it, I know Palat scores that goal, 5-on-5. Five five, unbelievable feed from Nikita Kucherov, which is what we expect to see from him because he is that good. But outside of that, Dan, in eight minutes of 5-on-5 five five play head-to-head, -head, they only mustered two shots. One of them happened to be a goal, which is great. But that tells you how you know much domination that defensive pairing has and how good they are. So for me, I felt like this was a moment of, it reminded us of two things. If you weren't watching the Colorado Avalanche throughout the playoffs or during the regular season, this was an eye-opener for a lot of casual fans that were saying, holy smokes, they play fast. The other thing is, if you wanted another test of how good the Taze and McCarr pairing is, game one showed us that, yes, they played against McDavid. They showed that they could match his speed or at least stay up with his speed to a certain extent. And now against a different line altogether, game one, they showed how good they could be as well. Yeah, Tampa Bay is really going to have to take advantage of you know, Jack Johnson and Eric Johnson when they are out there on the ice, because even 
you know, even Bowen Byram looked really good in, in game one and obviously caused Tampa some trouble, did have uh, an assist on that first goal, that opening goal of the game for Colorado. Now, look, we, we know Tampa's a really good team. This is, it has almost an Olympic feel to it, Randy, where we are getting a best on best, which doesn't normally happen in the Stanley Cup final, unfortunately, but we are getting that. And the Lightning, as much as they are back-to-back Stanley Cup champs, they are the less talented team in the overall, for me, at least. And I think John Cooper has almost admitted that as well. So how do you overcome that? And you know, one thing that was awful in game one for the Lightning was their power play. And that's usually not the case. I think, you know, Victor Hedman's poor performance played into that. They really struggled getting entries on the power play. Those are things uh, Tampa's going to need Vasilevsky to be great. And he will be through the rest of this series, but they also need their power play to get going. If they're going to keep up scoring with the Colorado avalanche. Yeah. The Colorado avalanche are tough to keep up with when you're talking about a run and gun style of play. Cause that's what they're going to force you to do. They're going to, force you to play defense. And we saw that, whether that's a, a transition game, whether that's a heavy forecheck, whether that is, you know, they've got players that match even more so. You talked about uh, one Woodbridge boy, I'm going to throw another one in there. Cogliano is a, another, uh, you know, player that, that along with Val Nutrushkin, along with players like that, if we see Nazem Kadri and Cogliano, uh, you know, consistently in the series, they're guys that can play with a heavy forecheck. But Val Nutrushkin put on a clinic last game where, Pressuring the puck is something that they did extremely well. So can you match that? The only way I think Tampa Bay can really make this a, 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 a back and forth series, don't get me wrong, I think Tampa Bay wins this, but I feel as though if the run and gun style of game is played, it favors the Colorado Avalanche. You have to slow down the Colorado Avalanche a little bit more. And that starts in their own zone. You have to make sure you get the puck out cleanly. That moment, the hesitation, we saw about a half a second of hesitation from some of the defensemen in game one. You can't have that. You got to get the puck out clean. So when you talk about Victor uh, Hedman playing much better, damn right, that's going to have to be something that is is prominent in game two. The other thing is Sergeyev and uh, the other defensemen do have to match that as well. But I think when Hedman plays as much as he does in a game, he's the key. He has to be better. Now, beyond that, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, Nathan McKinnon versus Sorelli. Yeah. That's the matchup that you got right now. And we've seen Jared Bednar does, is not afraid of Nathan McKinnon playing against the best center. At some point, if this doesn't work in game two as well, if you can see the speed difference, if you can see the easy, you know, the style that, that McKinnon plays and it's too easy for him, do you switch that up a little bit? Do you go head to head? Kind of what the Edmonton Oilers tried to do with the Colorado Avalanche. Do you try to put best line against best line when this thing comes back to Tampa or you know, because Denver, the Colorado Avalanche have the last change, they can kind of dictate that to a certain extent. Do you see them go maybe move away from Sorelli if they struggle in game two? That's what I'm looking out for. I just don't know what the uh, what the alternative is. Uh, maybe if Braden Point, you feel a little bit better about him coming back into the series after the long layoff. Maybe, maybe use him down the middle against that line, but there's not just too many options. And again, it is Nathan McKinnon, so it's more about slowing them down and uh, just not letting them have so much of the puck and dominate when they are on the ice. Now, it's not all, you know, perfect for the Colorado avalanche. Obviously this game one just ends in overtime uh, and Tampa was able to come back despite the fact Colorado dominated the run of play for most of it. Darcy Kemper has to be a bit of a concern for the Colorado avalanche and their fans, because at some point they are going to need him to be better than he was and has been through the course of these playoffs. You're as only as strong as your uh, weakest link. And right now, I hate to say it, he is the Achilles heel of this team. Coming back from injury, even when he was playing, he wasn't the strongest. And in game one, it's not like you got a boost of confidence. You're not puffing out your chest if you're a Colorado Avalanche fan after that performance. They win. But one thing I think you can walk away if you're Tampa and you can say, first of all, a few of our players, Hedman Vasilevsky did not play well. You still took the game to overtime and the goalie that you're playing against is not in a good position right now where you can see he doesn't have the confidence. So to me, this was a a situation where you're talking about a player that is lacking confidence. And I think as long as Darcy Kemper is in a position where he is, you know, playing like this, Tampa's got a great shot in this series because yeah, he's not, he does not exactly give you a boost of confidence. So 
that unfortunately, whether it's Francois or Darcy Kemper, that to me is the Achilles heel of this juggernaut Colorado Avalanche team. Are you writing off the Tampa Bay Lightning after the game one loss? How do they get back and tie this one up before it heads back to South Florida? Let us know in the comments. We'll respond to as many as we can. Enjoy game two on Saturday night. Randy, Pocky Night in Canada, Punjabi, you're there. That's the f- damn right. It's the final, final show of this year as well. So make sure you tune in for Hockey Night in Canada up in W Saturday. 